thing happen. There's always a way. Sometimes there's two ways, sometimes there's five ways to get your theme output to look exactly the way they want it to look. But if you're new to Drupal and you don't know about these like magic keys inside arrays that you can stuff stuff in and exactly the right place to make classes come out, it's really hard for new people to figure out how to leverage the system that's there. So it's infinitely powerful, but that also makes it really complicated and hard to use. Um, so we're going to go over some of the negatives to Drupal 7, um, starting with uh, language that is specific only to Drupal. Uh, Drupal does use the PHP template engine, but in Drupal 7, we changed the way PHP template works, and now it works in only a way that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. It only happens in Drupal. Um, we put function calls inside of our template files, whereas before, the templates were just supposed to print variables to the page. And now we're like, well, we don't really want to print these variables. We want to render these giant structures. And so instead of just printing them, we need to put these renderable things in, and then we can change the renderable things around in the template files. And it became no longer a template system that inserted variables, but now a very complicated system that only exists in Drupal. So the theme layer is currently what we call a Drupalism. It doesn't exist anywhere else on the internet. So it was also really hard for people who didn't have any programming background to figure out how to work in Drupal template files. There are some places where things are just printed. For example, um, if it's a key of an object or a value from an object, you use an arrow to print it. And then there are some places where the thing that you're printing stuff out of is an array. So you use like a square bracket and a quote. And for people who don't understand the difference between an object and an array and they just want to write HTML code, they never know which thing to print where. Sometimes it's an object, sometimes it's an array. They don't need to know the inner workings of how Drupal deals with all of its variables in order to write HTML code. But we're now requiring that they understand that just to write a theme for Drupal. There's also some places where we just print the variable exactly as is. Oh, I got a variable, let's print it. And then there's other places where you actually have to render the variable before you print it. So you print render it. And that's like not only a kind of a little, you know, print and render mean the same thing. So conceptually, you're like, why are we doing both things to this variable? But it's also really confusing that we don't do it consistently. If you always had to print render, people would get in the habit of doing print render, print render, print render. Or if you always had to print, people would get in the habit of print. So now it's like arbitrary, where sometimes you render something, and sometimes you print render something, and sometimes you print something. So that was also really confusing for people. <coughs> uh, it also turns out that PHP is horribly insecure. And 100% uh, of all contributed themes on Drupal.org are vulnerable to attack. Um, that's with a little rounding error. Um, but part, part, of the reason, part of the reason that is is just because PHP is an insecure language. You can do whatever you want with it, which is positive, because at the end of the day, you can get whatever it is done you need to get done. But it's also really easy to do things the wrong way. And when I was creating this slide, I accidentally refreshed the page on my Drupal site and dropped my node table. It was just like, <laughs> oh, right, uh, I shouldn't have done that. And it's the kind of thing where you want people who know what they're doing to be able to get in there and do exactly what they need to do, but you don't want to take a loaded gun and hand it to a front-end developer and say, there are some nails over there, but be careful with this because you're probably going to hurt yourself. We want to give them the tools that they need to hammer in the nails and not the tools that they need to you know, blow off their toes. So PHP is insecure. The uh, security team at Drupal.org hates the fact that our themes are horribly insecure. And um, we're going to try and find a way to solve that next version. There's also a lot of different ways to do things. If you're a front-end developer and you're coming to Drupal and you find template files and you're like, oh, great, templates. That's HTML in there. I know how to work with that. And you start going, OK, well, here's the page template, but it prints this thing out called content. OK, how do I find out where content's coming from? Oh, well, it's different. OK, on a node, it's this node template. And on a term, it's this term template. And on a view, it's a views template. And wait a minute, how many templates are there? And then you try and look through core. This is just core. And figure out how many template files there are. And you're like, well, there's a lot of template files. If I want to override every single piece of markup in all of Drupal, I have a lot of work to do. But it turns out you're not done yet, because Drupal does not only use template files to generate its markup, it also uses theme functions. And so I tried to take a screenshot of all of the theme functions that are generating markup in Drupal core. But as you can see, there's so many that I had to make the font so it's all you can't read. So if you're trying to override every single piece of markup that comes out of Drupal core, you've got a lot of work to do. And, and this is just kind of an idea. When we first started with Drupal, we probably had a few. And it's been years. And so we just keep adding new stuff. Every module adds their own. Sometimes it adds three or four or five or 20. And sometimes they're exactly the same. But they're like, ah, I write new functions. That's what I do. I'm a module developer. And so we end up with way too many. 
So what we're going to try and do in Drupal 8 is consolidate the ones that are the same and recycle. If you have an item list, we're going to call the item list template. You don't need a user list or a member list or a menu list or whatever. It's an item list. It's the same content. We're going to recycle it. Um, so we're doing a lot of consolidation and cleaning up, making sure that overrides still work. Um, just decrease the number of ways there are to do things. So there's also a really complicated mix of systems going on. And this also comes from the fact that Drupal originally started off doing one thing and then we ran into a problem and we're like, oh, we need a solution to it. Here's a complicated solution. Let's just tack this onto the solution we already have. And then we ran into another problem and we're like, oh, we could solve that with this other solution and tack it on what we already have. And by the time we got done with Drupal 7, we didn't realize how many different things were going on. And one of our theme system maintainers was like, why can't I figure out what's going on? Let me draw a picture of how content actually goes from coming out of the Drupal database to being rendered on the page. And he found this pattern where there were things calling things, calling other things, calling the first thing again, but with a different set of variables, and then calling something else, and then going into render, and then coming out and calling a theme function. It was just like, well, no wonder no one can figure it out. <laughs> Drupal doesn't even know what it's doing. It's just got too much stuff going on. So what we're going to try and do in Drupal 8 is get rid of all of these different layers of stuff and replace them with things that are more consistent so content always goes from data structure into rendered output without going back and forth through that system who knows how many times on any given page load. You'll also notice that this is a uh, maybe, <laughs> yeah, the there's some stuff going on that we need to get rid of. All right, so all of these things add together and you get this system that is really, really hard to learn. And what I discovered is that um, I, I consider myself a developer, but when I first started working with Drupal, I was like, oh, it's open source. I'm going to play with the code. Where am I going to start? Well, I'm going to write a theme, because I know HTML and I know CSS, and that's obviously where you just stick your toe in the water and say, can I do this? And back in the days of Drupal 4.7, it was really easy. You're just like, oh, there's like one template file, and you know, it doesn't work right. You just write your own PHP code and stick SQL queries in there, and it's fine, right? No, it's not fine. Um, turns out Drupal. Five got better, Drupal six got more complicated, but still like more powerful, and then in Drupal seven, it's just like the learning curve that new people have to go through just to figure out how to get their markup to come out the way they want to is completely ridiculous. And if that's the place where all of our developers start, where all of our new contributors first touch Drupal to see if they can figure it out, and the learning curve is as steep there as it currently is, we're losing new contributors, we're losing new adopters, we're losing everyone who just wanted to see if they could do it and then can't. So I think that the theme layer should be the easiest place to start because that's where everyone first comes in. And you want to give people success at the beginning and say, look how easy it was to do that, yay. And then when they think they know what they're doing, then you say, well, now you can write a module and you have to learn about PSR0 and these funny file systems and everything isn't procedural anymore, it's object oriented, and that can come later. But first, we want to give them a good positive experience working with Drupal. So the theme layer needs to be approachable. So these are the fifth problems we discovered in Drupal 7. We have Drupal-specific template conventions. We have mixed data types in our templates. We have different methods of printing stuff out. Uh, PHP template is insecure. There's two ways to override markup. Way too many versions of things you can override. Um, and a complex m mix of subsystems, and all of these things add up to a theme system that's too hard to learn. So we're gonna talk a little bit about our approach to solving all of these problems in Drupal 8 and see if we can cross some of these things off of our list. So, uh, at the end of Bad Camp last fall, we had a theme sprint where we got together and tried to figure out um, what were some principles that we should follow while designing a new theme layer. Like, what every time we have to make a decision about whether we should do something or not, we needed kind of a rule book, like a manifesto, to consult and say, does this fit with our principles? And if so, we should do it, and if not, we should figure out how to make it align with these principles. So the first thing we did was come up with this list of principles. We started to um, think about what people wanted their markup to look like coming out of Drupal. And right now, when you start with stock Drupal, there is stuff everywhere. There are divs around everything. <laughs> there are glasses coming out the wazoo, and there's just a lot of stuff on the page. And what we wanted to do is kind of start with the opposite approach. So we want to start with nothing. We want one div, or maybe no divs, just your elements on the page. And we want no classes, or only the classes that are necessary to actually create functionality. And we're going to provide a base theme, perhaps Bartek, that will add all of the crap that's already there back in. So Drupal core will spit out nothing, and it will be up to the theme to add what they want. And if you want to have a theme that includes all of these bells and whistles, something like Zen style, you can add one, and it can add those. And we're going to give an example in core of how that can be done. So pipe dreams is what we want. 
<laughs> it's really hard to get there from where we are, um, but that's what we're working to. That's one of our starting principles. We also want to build from use cases. There's a lot of stuff that's going on in Drupal right now where developers are like, well, it could be that a theme developer wants to do this, so I'm going to write all of this crazy abstract code just in case someone ever wants to do it. And what we want to do is say, you know, no one is ever going to override every single anchor tag on their entire website. So why are we giving them a theme link function that allows you to do that? It's, it creates a lot of overhead, it's really messy, but it's one of these things where we don't have a good use case for that, but why do we have a solution for it in Drupal? So we're gonna try to make sure that all of the new tools we're adding are actually there to solve real problems and they're not to solve what if problems. Um, we're also going to make sure that we provide tools. Um, this is the kind of thing where uh, if someone needs to override every single link function in core, there needs to be a way for them to do that. That doesn't mean we're going to provide the template for them to do it in core. What we're going to do is provide a place where they can create that kind of experience for themselves. So we don't need to account for all of these use cases out of the box. We just need to make sure that our system is flexible enough that if someone runs into one, they have the tools they need to be able to do it themselves. So this is the kind of thing where we can punt and say, that's up to Contrib. As long as Contrib has a way to tap into this system and change it, we'll call it good enough. We don't need to solve all of these problems in core. So we make sure that all of the tools that run in developers are still available, although we won't be providing all the solutions right out of the box. The next option is to consolidate um, I talked about every module wanting to provide their own theme functions. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is make sure that um, we have a set of uh, standard template files in core that everyone can use for things like item list. And every module in core needs to use those template files when they need to create something like an item list. And this is the kind of thing where over years and years and years, Contrib has all gotten in the habit of, well, Core writes all of their own theme functions, so I'll write all my own theme functions too. <laughs> and so it's like, well, if we just clean up core, Contrib might start to follow, but it'll be a little slow. So we're gonna try and make it a really consistent, well-documented pattern library for how markup should come out of core. Not just do it in core, but say, look, these are the template files and the theme functions that we provide to you. Not the theme functions, these are template files we provide to you. <laughs> and this is the way that they should be used. If you need to override them, this is the way you can add your own specific override hook so that if people need to override only the item list from your module, they can do that, but you're still gonna recycle the code that's in core. Your code is not special. Um, and we, we have a whole bunch of ideas for what our component library should look like based on a bunch of blog posts from a bunch of really um, prolific Drupal themers. Um, but it's really hard to actually get there without knowing the code that we're starting from. So that as we're going through and converting all the stuff in core, we've got a giant spreadsheet of like, these are the things we think our components should be. But we can't start from a perfect world because Drupal is so far from there already. We've got to kind of meet somewhere in the middle. Um, so we have this, you know, pie in the sky dream of having this really nice clean component library. But when we ship Drupal 8, it'll probably be a sloppy component library, and then we'll be able to refactor that in Drupal 9 and make a really nice clean Drupal <laughs> component library. But um, it's again, we want to have a, a set of things that everyone, core and contribute, everyone else can use. If you want to add your own things to it, like the HTML5 spec changes, we're going to give you a tool to do that. But that doesn't mean that we have to account for everything everyone could ever possibly want to do out of core. Um, we're also going to try and make things really easy to find. One of the things that was really frustrating for people who are new to Drupal is that you open up a template file and you have a variable and you want to change that variable but you don't know where the content came from. So then you open up another template file and then inside there is another variable and, you, and you're starting to think about how many template files are really necessary to print out this one thing. I wanted to see the menu and I opened up the theme menu tree and it was just a UL tag and then you're like, okay, well then you open another one and it's just an LI tag and, you open that and you're just like, where is the code I'm actually going after? <laughs> These are the kind of things where we can keep together. We can keep complicated systems inside complicated template files and assume that our theme developers will be able to figure out uh, how to get what they need. So we don't need to overly abstract things. We're gonna make things where to find, when, where, where you expect to find them. So when you open up a template file, what you want is gonna be inside of that. And also the name of that template file is gonna reflect the thing you're looking for. Um, we don't need to call a UL template file for a menu. We could provide a file called menu. And then people would say, oh, I need to write the menu. Here's the file. So we're trying to make Drupal more intuitive so people will just know how to use it right away. 
We also want to make things consistent. One of the biggest problems with Drupal right now is that everybody who's written any code in Drupal core does it slightly differently. And there isn't any kind of consistency path to say, like, do we do the same thing in one module as we do in the other? Um, this, changing our theme layer, gives us a chance to look at all of the code that's ever been written in our theme layer and clean it all up. So it gives us a chance to say, let's make this consistent. Let's decide on what our variable names should follow. Let's decide how our preprocess functions should look. Let's figure out how things are done in one place and do them the same way everywhere else. Now, that doesn't mean it'll stay that way for forever, but we can at least do it once, and we can create some guidelines that people should follow when adding stuff in the future, and hopefully people will continue to keep it fairly clean going forward. And the last thing is not to dumb it down. I feel like a lot of uh, front-end developers hear the the Drupal developers say all of the time, oh, you know, they aren't gonna know how to do that. And it's almost offensive. These people are really smart. They've already figured out our ridiculous Drupal 7 theming system. And we should just say, you know what? Sometimes complex problems have complex solutions. And when that happens, we're just gonna give it to you. And we're gonna trust that you're gonna be able to figure it out. So not to dumb things down, not to abstract things in ways that people may or may not benefit from, um, but just let solve the problem the way it should be solved and let people figure out how that needs to be used. And this last one is kind of complicated. Um, we're trying to figure out how to organize all of our new components of the theme system. And this organization needs to be driven, driven by meaning, semantic meaning, rather than convenience. So a lot of things in Drupal right now are written because developers are lazy, and so they write shortcuts into their code. So something like theme item list can handle both a UL and an OL tag when semantically an unordered list and an ordered list are really different things. And HTML knows this, and that's why they created elements for an ordered list and an unordered list. Just because they both have li tags inside them does not mean the same theme function should be used to call both items. So we're gonna try and make um, the way Drupal thinks about writing front-end code more like the way front-end developers think about writing code and less like the way lazy developers think about writing front-end code. So rather than saying, it's an ally tag, it's the same everywhere, we're gonna put it inside the menu, we're gonna put it by the list, no. It's semantically a different thing and we need to make sure that our theme system and the way that people think about using our theme system matches the way the people who are using it think. So we're gonna try and keep things um, more in line with the people who are using it. So, what are we gonna do for this new theme layer? This is its wig. It has some thorns on it. Not really sure that's relevant. Also has a really pretty leaf. Um, so Twig is an open source, uh, PHP, object-oriented templating engine. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like from the front, like from a, a theme developer perspective. If you have any questions on how it actually works, we can get into that a little bit later. Um, it's a really complicated, sophisticated tool that has a nice, easy to use interface. Um, which I find really attractive. So um, we're gonna try and go with Twig. We've had a lot of uh, discussions about other theme engines at the very beginning of the process and it seemed like everybody wanted Twig. I was not uh, for Twig at the beginning. I wanted to keep PHP templates because that's what everyone already knew. But since everyone else was for it, I eventually jumped on board. And since we've made that decision, there's been a lot of other things that we've ended up getting that are great wins that we wouldn't have gotten if we hadn't decided to go with Twig. So um, number one, it's really well documented. Uh, Twig has its own documentation on Twig's website, and all we need to do is kind of add supplemental documentation for how we're using Twig with Drupal, and let the documentation that stands on its own syntax and stuff speak for itself, which is really good. It's also really extendable. We've written extensions specifically for Drupal to handle things that Drupal does that Twig didn't do ahead of time, and it can, we can continue to do that not only in core when we run into new problems, but also in contrib. If someone writes some module that provides some functionality, they can also include an extension that works with Twig to make Twig deal with whatever it is they're adding to. Um, it's secure. Unlike PHP, this is not code that you can accidentally break anything with. Well, I guess you've tried hard enough, you probably can, because it's still <laughs> PHP under the hood. Um, but you can do something like a, a template file. You can't do anything other than what we allow you to do in that template file. So if you want to print a variable, that's fine. If you want some logic, that's fine. But you cannot run, write a SQL query without a special extension written for Twig, which we will not allow in core. Um, and you can't do nasty things with your you know, security, right? You can't accidentally punch a hole in your security using Twig. Um, the Twig template file is being secure. Also adds a huge other benefit. Where, does anyone remember this uh, horrible module called Contemplate or Content Templates? that let you edit your template files in the browser, right? Well, this is, this is a, a, 
<laughs> understandable desire, but a really, really bad idea when your template files are made of PHP code. But if your template files aren't made of PHP code, if there's some abstracted language that gets parsed and dealt with in a secure manner, then we can start to allow that to happen again. Mm -hmm. So a module like Contemplate could be viable in Drupal 8 because you can now edit things in a browser, you can save stuff in the database, and you're not exposing yourself to a huge risk. You don't have to write files on disk. We can talk about that later. So Twig being secure is a huge win. Also, make the security theme of Drupal happy and um, maybe not 100% of themes in core, but a lot of them will become secure just by changing to Twig. Um, it's also really well tested. There's a bunch of other systems out there already using Twig and it's unit tested. So we can figure out how to keep our system um, intact with Drupal's internal test system also. Um, it's pretty fast. We compared it to, a, uh, well actually this wasn't us. Someone else did a comparison of theme engines and figured out that it actually went really fast. Uh, part of the, the concern with using why we had both theme functions and template files in previous versions of Drupal is that a theme function was fast and a template file was slow. And part of the reason that was is that the template file needed to be read from disk, have all its variables prepared ahead of time, and then the variables inserted into the template file. And that all had to happen when you requested a page. And so what Twig does, it's a little bit different, is that as you're creating, editing these template files, they do get saved to disk, but then they get compiled into giant PHP functions that sit there and wait to be called when your page is executed. So when you actually request a page, it doesn't go read the file from disk and prepare everything ahead of time, it just calls a function and executes it and spits out the results. And this also is not only beneficial for just how it happens in the first place, but also if you have the same thing that needs to be done 300 times on a page, for example, a comment might appear 300 comments on a post, um, in the PHP template land, it would need to go and read that file from disk 300 times, insert the variables and print it out. With Twig, all it needs to do is call that function with different parameters passed in every time. So you get a huge performance gain when repeating stuff. And if we succeed in our consolidating of template files and theme functions that are very similar, we might end up having one template file that's like, this is a thing that has a title and some content. And a thing with some title and some content can be a node, it can be a comment, it can be a block, it can be anything on your page. And so if you have one function that's being run for every single element on your page that has a title and content, that'll start to be really, really fast. So it's the kind of thing where there's a huge potential here for a performance gain over what we were seeing with BHP template. Um, I say potential because we need to convert all of Drupal before we can properly benchmark it and see what that's like in the real world. If we do it halfway, it's like, well, now you're running both, and that's just really bad. So um, <laughs> there's this kind of thing where it's like, in theory, it'll be better, but we don't really know if that's going to pan out in the real world until we get done. Um, Twig also integrates with IDEs. So anyone who needs to use an IDE for Drupal, which will probably be everyone in Drupal 8, um, will have plugins that will highlight their syntax and help you find problems with Twig and hook it all up in ways that it's really nice. Uh, we were talking about this a little bit earlier too, but it's also a recognizable syntax. The syntax of Twig looks like other things found elsewhere on the web. So even if people haven't had experience using Twig, they'll still be able to open these files and say, oh, this looks a lot like X, X being one of these things. And they'll understand how to use it without very much training. Um, another reason that I was really against choosing Twig in the beginning was because I felt like it was something else people needed to learn on top of Drupal, which was already too much. Um, but as I started using it, I realized that the learning curve was really minimal. It's written in mostly English, and you d just kind of absorb it more than having to learn it. And if you have a reference guide, it's not so bad. Um, and Twig was also written by uh, Fabian, who is the guy who wrote Symphony, and we talked about earlier Symphony being um, a framework which Drupal 8 is now built upon. Um, because it was written by the same guy, there are a lot of things that work really well together. So Twig is like an extension that you can add on to Symphony, and Symphony can use Twig, and they work really nicely together. Um, we also have a really good relationship with Fabian since we're using all of his other code, so when we have any problems with Twig, we can create issues in the Twig queue and say, hey, Drupal needs this thing over here, and he'll actually look at it, which is really great to be able to have that kind of a cohesion between all of our internal pieces working together. So who wants to see Twig files? Yay. Yeah, sure. All right, so this is a Twig template. This is a replacement for our item list template. It was the first one we wrote um, back in January a year, a year ago, so 2012, at our first um, sprint. Uh, and this might not be the end result. It still deals with both OL and UL. We want to split those out into two separate template files. But just as an example for syntax, it's pretty clean and straightforward. Um, if you want to print a variable, you use these little curly braces and say, this thing is getting printed. 
And it turns out that any time you want to print a variable, it's referenced the same way. It doesn't matter if it's an object or if it's an array. It always uses a dot operator. So you say thing dot thing inside the other thing, and then it'll print. So Twig will handle converting whatever type it was into a type thinking and it printed that way in your template file. If you want to run a command, you use a curly bracket and then a percent sign. So that works for if statements, loops, anything that you want to uh, assign new variables, anything that's kind of code-like, you put inside this curly brace and a percent sign. And anytime you want to add a comment, you do a curly brace and a pound sign. So um, this is uh, another thing where your template files are start to look really consistent. There's only three ways to do anything in Twig, and those will appear everywhere all over everything. So overall, it's really simple and intuitive. Um, there's a lot of new lines in this file that might end up translating into new lines in your source code. So we're also playing with different ways to use Twig's white space control operators. So you've got one set of operators that says remove any space inside these tags, and you've got another one that says remove any space outside these tags. And we're gonna try and figure out a way to work with those within Drupal. Um, this template doesn't show any examples of that because when we first put it in, everyone in Drupal who looked at it were like, oh, there's a typo in this file. And we're like, no, it's there on purpose. So we're trying to find a better way to consistently create some rules around when you should use which type of operators and try and make our output from Drupal actually look really nice on the page as well as our template files for new front-end developers to look really nice in code too. <coughs> So we now are going to try and replace all of the theme functions in Drupal core with template files. Twig doesn't believe in theme functions, we're going to try and get rid of all of that and turn everything into a template file that prints variables into it. So as a front-end developer in Drupal 8, if you want to override markup, you find a template file and you change the template file. Um, currently, we still are keeping free process because all our developers in previous versions of Drupal absolutely loved free process. There's actually a way that we can remove the pre process layer and integrate it, that as part of Twig 2. Um, because we're a little behind on how much conversion we have to do before Drupal 8 comes out, that feature has been pushed to Drupal 9 instead of Drupal 8. So we'll probably still have pre process to manipulate stuff um, unless we get a whole bunch of people working on Twig and we get it done and then we can get rid of pre process entirely, which will be great. Um, again, leaving tools there so everyone will still have a way to do what they did in pre process. Um, but we can get rid of a whole like rendering layer. There's also gonna be a whole lot less code in our theme layer if we switch to template files. As it turns out, it takes a lot of PHP code to write HTML, whereas if you had just written the HTML in the first place, it's really straightforward. So this is an example of our theme username function, which used to be a handful of code, and now it's just like either an anchor tag or a span tag, and that's it. So a whole bunch of stuff is just gonna get cleaned up. Our image tag will just turn into an image tag in a template file. Um, a link tag will just become a link tag and hopefully go away entirely, but I'm having a really hard time fighting that battle. But what's and the battle To remove theme link, because oh. we need it for renderables. We've got to replace it with something else, but for now, it's there. We'll kill it later. So this is an example of what the theme item list function looked like before it was in Twig. It was a huge mess because it had to account for all of these possible circumstances. When we turn it into a template file and just print the markup and stick the variables in it where we wanted to, you can remove a lot of the stuff that we were doing in the theme function. Um, a lot of it is because things like loops can be moved into the template files, whereas with PHP template, that was a little sloppy to deal with sometimes. And then a lot of the pre-processing just prepares variables into the state that they need to be in order to run them through the print, execute, whatever, twig insertion thing that happens later. Um, so we do end up getting rid of a lot of lines of code by converting to Twig. Um, so let's go through this list of <laughs> problems we had in Drupal 7 and see how close we're getting. So the first one was Drupal specific template conventions. Well, Twig exists elsewhere in the world. It's syntactically similar to other languages and it looks a lot like HTML, which is the language that front-end developers are used to working with. So I think we've solved that problem. The second item is mixed data types, where you have strings and objects those things are always gonna exist in Drupal, but what we've done is figured out a way to mask that from the front-end developer. So if you want a variable, you print it exactly the same way. It's always printed with a dot operator between the two. So we've solved that one. The next one is different, different methods of printing. Well, what we've already done in our conversion to Twig is removed all calls from render from the template file. It's up to Twig to actually call render as it's inserting the variables, and it can figure out whether it needs to call render or not. 
So you just say, print this thing, and Twig will say, oh, it's a renderable, I'll call render on it, or, oh, it's just a variable, and I'll just insert it for you. So you never have to call render in any of your template files. In fact, you don't even need to say print. All you need to do is use the little curly brackets, and Twig will handle printing the variable that needs to be rendered, handle render on it for you, too. So we've solved that one. PHP template being insecure. Well, guess what? Twig also has an auto escape mode that will help sanitize all information that's coming out of your database. So not only can you not do stupid stuff like accidentally drop your node table by refreshing pages on your database when you're creating slides for a presentation, <laughs> but you can also not have to worry about whether your content needs to be sanitized, whether it's user input or not, because Twig can tell if this content has come from the database, does it need to be sanitized on the way out, what kind of formatting sanitization does it need, and do that for you too. Um, this is another thing that ended up creating a lot of the security problems in Drupal 7 is that a front-end developer doesn't necessarily understand when they need to sanitize their own data and when they don't. And part of that is Drupal's fault that we have sanitized half of it for you already. And then we're like, oh, but if you need something we haven't thought of, guess what? We didn't even tell you you needed to sanitize it. So here's this gun and don't shoot your toes off. Um, but it turns out that Twig can handle all of that for you. So whether we prepare it for you or not, um, Twig will just say, oh, this needs to be sanitized and sanitized on the way up, which means that we can remove a lot of the code in Drupal that's handling all of the data sanitization on the front so that Twig does it, which means that now every theme template, every theme that's based on Twig will be have sanitized data automatically, and every theme that's not based on Twig, so if we had some sticklers who wanted to continue to use PHP template, would know that they always need to sanitize every single piece of data. And now we're being consistent in both places. So every theme, Twig or PHP template, will get more secure. So the next problem is that we had two different ways to override markup, theme functions and template files. All of the theme functions are going away. They're all getting replaced with template files, and all of these template files are being compiled into code that can execute it on the fly, so it won't be slower. Um, so that'll be good. Anytime you want to override anything, it's always going to be a template file. Hopefully you're going to be able to know where to find it. You're going to be, know, you're going to be able to know what it's called, and things will get consolidated together. So that should get much better to figure out how to override what markup you're looking for. Um, and then we have way too much stuff that is similar. And this is something that we're still working on now. Every time we find a theme function that looks a lot like another theme function, I go and create an issue on Drupal and I'm like, consolidate these things. And then I throw it into a spreadsheet of like, these are all the things we want to consolidate. And some of them are really easier, just like, oh yeah, why did that ever exist? Delete and call this other function. And some of them are a little bit more complicated because it's like, someone might want to override this version of that template. So we need to add a theme hook so that you can say, I'm only overriding the administrative table on this type of page. And then you have access to override it. Um, so there, we're making a lot of progress on that. There's a bunch of issues that we can use some help on. Just like, oh, we're moving functions. That sounds like fun. Anyone can do that. Rip out code. Yay. <laughs> uh, so you want to get involved in ripping out code. There's a bunch of that you can do too. Um, and we also have a really complicated mix of subsystems. So this is going to get a little bit better in Drupal 8. Um, this is Drupal 7's process. In Drupal 8, we can remove the theme functions and the theme override functions. So that's two systems we're already getting rid of, the theme functions that come from core, and the way that you override them in your theme by theme name underscore whatever the theme function was. Those are both going away, which is good. Um, we're also getting rid of uh, process functions. So process is a layer that we created in Drupal 7 that would take something that was an array in preprocess, like classes array, and turn it into a string, like a list of classes that gets printed. Twig can do that for us. Twig will, will flatten things for us, so we don't need that layer in, at all. So there's a whole, also a whole bunch of issues on Drupal that work just to remove process functions. So if anyone wants to help with that, those are also really easy. Ripping stuff out, yay. Um, and we're also getting rid of the render system, right? These calls to render that exist inside template files, we don't need those anymore. Um, there is some magic going on right now where Twig is calling Drupal render, which is like Drupal's equivalent of render, which gets called in the theme layer, so it's like the higher functioning version of it. Um, but we can get rid of a lot of the render stuff that's going on entirely. So no front-end developer will ever need to understand render because the, all they need is the template file and the variables that are going into it. We can call that whatever we want. It's just going to be internal to Twig. So the idea of the render array is we can pop stuff in and out and then print the rest of the array. Is that persisting? Yeah. So what we're doing as part of this conversion is taking anything in any theme uh, function Preprocess function or template file that was rendered already and turning it into a render array. So everything will just live in its like data state until it gets passed to Twig. And then Twig says, I'm going to take this giant array and turn it into markup. 
So if we can get everything in Drupal to exist as data before it's passed to the theme layer, then we'll actually be re-enabling the ability to use alternate theme engines. Because right now, the way it works is half of your content is rendered. And then we're like, oh, well, later we'll stick it together and shove it into the page. And it's really hard to train any other theme engine to work with that. But if we're like, here's a bunch of data that represents your page or your block or whatever it is, you can hand it off to any other system and say, render it, and you can use whatever template syntax you want or however you want to get it rendered. So we're keeping the idea of a renderable thingy. Um, right now, they're all renderable arrays because that's how Drupal works. We want to turn them into renderable objects because we'll have a little more power that way. We can pass them to Twig more easily and have like little fancy methods that print them based on translation or whatever you want. Um, but that's currently postponed to Drupal 9 because it would be really fancy, but we're a little behind. So we hope as we can get there now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we, we will be keeping the idea of having a renderable structure that you can rearrange in preprocessor, or whatever it is we give you that's exactly that same thing. And then when it gets passed to Twig, it'll render out however you wanted it to. So in theory, you could do the same thing where um, we still have like Twig, a Twig hide function. So if you wanted to hide something before you render it and then print it out somewhere later, you, you can still do that. I'm trying to kill that, but <laughs> <laughs> people really like it. I'll leave it alone. Um, and we also have this horrible hook right now, hook page alter, which <laughs> gives you this giant messy thing and it's like, you can rearrange this now. Well, we don't, won't actually need that if you can do that same thing inside the template file, if you can move stuff around. Um, and hopefully we'll be getting rid of that entirely also as part of the Scotch initiative, which I don't think you talked about. I got confused with whiskey. Yeah, understandable. So originally <laughs> whiskey and Scotch were the same initiative and it was gonna be a web services and global context initiative. Um, and this whole global context thing also would help us figure out like how to deal with blocks. Blocks in Drupal have been ignored for I don't know how many of the last versions of Drupal. And there's a whole bunch of limitations which are solved by a bunch of other modules in Gintrib right now like panels and context and who knows what else, page, whatever. There's lots of stuff that solves these problems. Display suite. Um, and we, the, the issue is just that the block system is dumb and we have global context. And if Whiskey provides global context, we need another system that can take global context and let us use it to control our blocks. And so that's what the Scotch initiative is, to get those backwards. I don't know. Yeah, Whiskey, yeah, Whiskey is that one. Scotch is blocks in, a new blocks in core, basically. It's going to work a lot like the way panels in core works now, with the same kind of concepts. Completely different user interface, because people hate panels user interface, but it, it's going to work <laughs> in fundamentally the same way. Um, and. Uh, with having a user interface to control where all of your blocks go based on which context, we'll also have less need for page alter. Your page will be established by Drupal when you say this layout in this context with this content on it. Um, and so you can have a user interface to do it and you'll have your Twig templates that you can do it if you want to do it that way too. So we won't need page alter anymore. Um, What's happening to panels? So uh, Scotch will stop when it gets all of the basic things covered, like how to create a page under different circumstances, how to add um, different templates to it, how to put content onto that page. Um, panels provides a lot of additional stuff, like creating a bunch of different variants or a bunch of different built-in contexts that match um, what Core already does. So panels will kind of pick up where Scotch stops. So Scotch will say, I'm only gonna do this little starting bit, and panels will say, well, everything else that we used to do that's not done, that's what we're gonna do. And so it'll probably use the new user interface. Um, probably still make it really complicated because it's trying to solve really complicated problems. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it will continue to exist in whatever format is needed, uh, which we won't know until Scotch is done. Um, so the last thing that I'm trying to remove is this preprocess layer. Again, this has also been postponed until Drupal 9, until we're sure we can provide a suitable alternative um, because it works right now, so we're just going to build it the way it is working and try and get it done. If we get it done, if we have time left, then we can clean it up. But for now, uh, we're leaving those in. But if we can remove render, page alter, theme functions, process functions, and preprocess functions, that's like almost half of our complicated subsystems, um, which I think will be a huge part into getting people to actually understand what's going on in Drupal. There's still going to be a, a theme registry, a list of all of the template files that are get used in your theme. There's still going to be a way you can override those or provide your own theme functions with the hook theme. There's still going to be a theme hook suggestion. So if you want to override one template but only in a specific instance, you can do that. We're still going to have a whole bunch of variables that get inserted into those template files. And we're still going to have a whole bunch of templates that exist all over your system. So all of the things that people really like are still going to be there. Hopefully it's just going to be a kind of a trimmed down version that is a little bit easier for new people to grok. So how are we doing on a complex mess of subsystems? <laughs> 
to do. <laughs> We're doing it. It's just taking a really long time. Um, all right. So Drupal is has been really hard for people to learn, both upgrading from Drupal six and people who are new to Drupal 7 who don't already have half of the Drupal learning curve behind them. Um, Drupal 8 is still going to be hard for people to learn coming from Drupal 7 because you've finally figured out how to do it. Um, but we're hoping that it'll be much, much easier for people who are new to Drupal to understand. So we're working on that one too. Um, hopefully we can fix all these other things then we can clean it up and make it better. So other things we get from using Twig. Um, Twig has this concept of template inheritance. So right now, if you have a node and you have a node template and you want to make a similar template for an article, you copy all of the code from your node template into another template and you rename it. And then six months later when someone wants to add something to those templates, you've got to find all of those node templates and change all of them in exactly the same way and maybe you'll miss one and then you'll get in trouble and that will suck. And what we want to do is say, you know, we have one template and we want this other template to just be exactly the same except for one piece of code. Well, Twig has a way of dealing with that. Unfortunately, it calls them blocks, which we're already using that word to mean something in Drupal, so this is going to be really confusing. Um, but we are going to show some examples of how this can be done in course. Hopefully, people will see. We're going to call it a code block to try and like get people's minds wrapped around it differently. But what you'll do is include your node template. And then in your node template, you'll include a little tiny line of code that says, this is a Twig code block. And something right here will be different. And then when you build your article template, all you do is say, this is the little tiny piece of code that's different. And then when you call an article, it'll call your node and then say, oh, I'm going to load that article thing right here. And so then later on, when you have to make a change, you only have to change one file and all of your templates will be updated. So there's some like huge wins with, you know, Twig has already solved this problem for us. This is something in Drupal we've been doing ungracefully for a really long time. So by adopting Twig, that'll be much better. Um, we also have a variable inspection. This is actually built into core. So uh, if you want to see which template file is being called and where your variables are coming from, you can turn on a debug mode in Twig and it'll say, here's the name of this template file and here are the variables that are going into it. And it's in core, so you don't need to install like a develop theme or anything to figure out what the heck that was that you just printed to the page. It'll tell you right there. So it'll also make theme development a lot easier. Um, templates are now safer in browser editing. I talked about this before. If we wanted to use something like Contemplate or something else, these template files are safe. Um, we have uh, possible performance gains, again, we need to test it later, but just because it could be faster than calling render, it's faster than carrying around these giant renderable arrays for the entire page, they're not going to be limited to each block that's on the page. Um, and this is really cool, we're not going to do this in core, but in contrib, we have the ability for the theme system in Drupal to be aware of changes that are made to your template files. So right now, if you go into Drupal and you change a theme setting, and you look at your page and nothing changes, it could be because whoever wrote that theme didn't take into account this setting in the user interface. So the theme has kind of broken the user interface. Well, in Drupal 8, the user interface can say, hey, what's in this theme file? Did they check to see if this variable was used? Oh, they didn't, I'm gonna disable this box. So you now have this ability for something to be default, in which case it's what Drupal core provided and it's gonna work the way you want, or overridden, that the custom theme is now disabling the user interface. And there can, there can be this possibility of you even doing something as crazy as writing your template file first and then putting it into Drupal, and then Drupal going, here's your blocks layout on this page. That's where you all fall out of your chairs. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't explain it really, let me try it again. Okay, so you're a front-end developer, and you know exactly what you want your markup to look like. So you write this entire page of all this markup, and you go to your user interface, and you're like, here's the name of this block, and you put it in here, and here's the name of this block, and you put it in here. And then you take your template file, and you put it into your theme, and you flush your caches, and then Drupal's like, I put all the blocks in the regions for you. And you can move them around? Yeah. Wow. You're still in your chairs. Well, anyway, it's going to be really cool. <laughs> um, where we've never had this ability before for Drupal to be able to read your template files and change its configurations, right? Well, now we've got this like CMI thing where we have files that get read that you change the configurations. And we have this like abstract PHP processing thing where Twig can figure out what's going on. So Twig could, in theory, configure your Drupal site based on the contents of your template files as well. So again, that's going to live in Contrib, but it's kind of a crazy possibility that front-end developers all over the world are really excited about because they can actually write their own markup for Drupal rather than having Drupal write their markup and they have to figure out which pieces to change. Does um, that mean caching is going away? No, no, so all it has to be completely cached in ways that we've <laughs> never no. cached anything ever before. Um, so in, in Drupal 8, there's like inside your site's default files directory, 
there's a PHP directory, mm -hmm. and Twig is responsible for shoving a whole bunch of code into that PHP directory. So every time you make a change to a Twig file, it'll recompile, kind of like, you know how Smarty has like a pre-compiled and then post-compiled folder? Works, yes. Yeah, it's a, so this works kind of similar to that, where you make changes to your template files in a language that's good for humans, and then Twig translates it into a language that's good for computers and shoves it into this directory. And so if you need to make a change to that template file, you've got to clear all your caches and you have to delete all the contents of that PHP directory in order for those files to, to actually clean up. So um, we're caching things in lots of new ways to try and mitigate the performance implications okay. of what would happen if we didn't. Okay, so it's changing a little bit. A little bit. Okay. Is, that, is that really going to happen? <laughs> you can make it happen. No, but I mean, I mean, like I know, I know there was there were, you know, this was supposed to be a kind of a core, a core concept about the, the you know, the bilateral existence of these templates. So we've we've talked a lot with Sam Boyer about how yeah, the the blocks and layouts thing is going to work, and he says this is definitely possible. Yeah. But it'll be up to Contrib to write something that will read the template files and then save the configurations into the blocks and layouts system. So we've, we're having it designed so that the tool is there, right? But the the piece that reads the files and saves the data isn't going to be part of core. That's not core's problem. We've just made it possible so that if someone wanted to do that, and I have a feeling that as soon as some really clever front end developer realizes that that's a potential, they'll say, "I want that." And this might be six months after Drupal 8 comes out, but it will exist because it's so like. Just aren't excited enough, but it's such a crazy thing for Drupal to actually be able to like dictate your markup to Drupal rather than have Drupal dictate its markup to you. That I think that that's it's just going to happen, and then there will be a whole bunch of people going, "This isn't good enough," and then it'll get better, and then it'll be really awesome, and then no one will ever use any other content management system because Drupal will be so much better. It's going to be part of the grassroots version, right? Okay, um, so uh, how are we on time? We don't know. Okay. <laughs> It's late, but um, if we have any questions about what we've talked about already. Uh, okay. I also want to show you like how to get involved, like where the issues are that we're all working on and how to actually test stuff and apply patches and add snarky comments about HTML that shouldn't be there, or classes that are ugly, or whatever you want, um, which is really all it is, which is really kind of fun. When you're like angry at Drupal, you're like, I'm going to bring out some theme functions today, and then it feels much better, because you're like, oh. That's great. Um, but before we get to that, does anyone have any questions? I talked a whole lot about everything really quickly, um, and there are only a couple of interruptions. Does anyone else have any other interruptions? I, I'm curious if the uh, if the, the Twig files are are they validatable in XML? Or like, will you be able to edit them in Dreamweaver, for example? Like, do they? Yeah. So there are plugins for lots of different systems that will let you do that. That'll say like, oh, you're missing a second curly brace or whatever. Um, and it'll be up to whatever tool you're using, like if it's Dreamweaver, to find a plugin for Dreamweaver that can check the syntax of your Twig files. Um, something else that I didn't mention that you just remind me of, though, is that um, these template files can be used on the PHP side, like the way Drupal normally uses template files, but they can also be used on the front end as JavaScript templates. So there's a library called Twig.js that lets you use, for example, your node template to load a node when you're just looking at a page, like on the PHP side, or if you had like a edit, and then a pop-up came up and you were able to change something and you clicked save and it did an Ajax reload of that page, it can use the same template file mm. that you used on the PHP side in the JavaScript li side to load your page. So that didn't have anything to do with what you're saying, but it did remind me that that was also a possibility. So this is another one of these wins I should add to that slide that you get by using Twig, is that there are already other libraries out there that plug into Twig that allow additional awesome functionality to happen. Mm. So yes, it can be validated um, both in any IDE you want or on the front end. Uh, to make sure that your syntax is correct before it puts out more content. Yes? Uh, I, I'm not using it, so I'm not sure, but Smarty uh, has a bunch of uh, modified extensions and stuff that can do this. <coughs> Smarty will tweak everything like that, but I think that's a person said yes, so I'm not sure. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's written as like plugins to Twig. Anything that exists for Twig, we can use in Drupal. I have to admit that I am not that familiar with what is going on in Twig because I spend most of my time in Drupal land. Um, but I have been trying to talk to a lot of people who have used Twig outside of Drupal and figure out like how is it intended to be used because I'm not sure what we're doing with it is you know what it was meant to do, well, and I'm trying to keep it. Right, so the 
way it's written now is that if there is an extension for Twig, you can add it as a contrib project. Like you can, someone can write a module that's like include this Twig library. And just the way Drupal can include external libraries for JavaScript now, you can in include external libraries for Twig in Drupal 8. So if someone has written something that works for Twig, we can throw it in Drupal. It'll probably require like also a little Drupal piece that's like in the real world that works like this, and in Drupal it works like this, so we're just gonna make them work together. Um, but it's definitely possible that anything that's out there, we can use. So this Twig.js library I was talking about is out there in the wild. It's not something we're putting in core, but it's definitely something that I see people already trying to use in Drupal 7's version of Twig, which is not what we're doing in Drupal 8 with this library, because they're like, I really want to use this thing, and they're trying to stick it together. So I'm like, oh man, as soon as we get Twig in there for Drupal 8, it's going to just pop in. So I would imagine that. That's another benefit of using open source software that's not just for Drupal, mm -hmm. is that we can steal everything. Oh, yeah. There's a Drupal 7 version of Twig? Kind of. So there <laughs> is a, a Drupal 7 Twig library that lets you, it's like contemplate, right? Where when you edit a node, it gives you Twig syntax. And then there's a filter. So when that node is being displayed, it parses your Twig file and spits it out. But that's not being used to replace any of the existing templates in Drupal. It's being it's being used to replace your content, which is a little bit different than what we're doing, which is like content is still content. You can use whatever filtering system you want. We're gonna replace everything around the content. Um, and then there's a couple of other places where people are like, I want this now, and they're trying to like work on Drupal 7, but we don't really know what the hell we're doing in Drupal 8 yet, so it's like really hard for them to keep up with, oh, we changed our mind, and they're like, what? And then I'm like, well, just come work over here and help us figure it out, and then you can have it when we're done, but they're like, I want it now. So, I don't know, there's, um, yeah. It's a learning curve, but it's really fun. Um, Any other questions? <laughs> I was just going to mention uh, Infinity B's um, yeah. little Twigs can box. Yep. It, it has a few little bugs that aren't that hard to fix to get it actually working. So, but it's so not doing things the same way. Which is a problem. Yeah, and it's not well, not really necessarily a problem. It's just different. It's just a different use of it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's this not be applicable when it right when Drupal eight comes out. That won't. I mean, it, you could still use it, but it's not going. It's different. And it's fine, like if you want to play with Twig, you can use the sandbox and you can use Twig on Drupal 7, but like fundamentally it's not the same thing as what we're doing in Drupal 8. And I think that's just kind of how something has to evolve in Drupal, is when it goes into core, everything has to get rewritten to accommodate it. And this is a tack on. So he's trying to do the best he can to use Twig <laughs> in the system that we he's currently have that doesn't work core. with it. Yeah. Right, and so I mean, he's been really good in our issues too. He comes in and goes, oh, I did it this way. And we're like, oh, we didn't think of that. And then you know, we do it that way. And we're like, oh, that didn't work at all. You shouldn't do it that way. And then you know, there's a lot of back and forth there about um, how, how stuff works. But yeah, he's been great. He's been helping us out too. You mentioned that there were tools being included. Um, what are some of the tools? Tools. Yes, I know. Concept <laughs> of like, um, okay, so Twig's DPM is one of them, right? Uh, DPM is a function in develop, stands for Drupal print message that properly formats your variables and spits oh, them out okay, on the page, I right? See. So we've put something like that into Twig where you can set a variable in your settings.php file where you say Twig but debug equals true. And then everywhere a template file gets called, it'll tell you which template file it is that's getting called. And then you can also print out, um, you can do like a, a recursive print of your context. We'll come up with a better name for it later. Um, it'll show all of the variables that are available for that template. So for example, um, on a node template, it'll say your node is available, but it'll also say like, these are all the stuff that are in your node. So if you have like um, a node that has a bunch of fields on it, every one of those fields will have like a, a thing you can target. And so what we want to do is build a, a kind of a token like inspector where you can say, here's the node and you click on the field and then it goes, here's the values or here's the, you know, whatever. So you can kind of drill in and it'll give you the twig syntax of the thing you need to shove in your template file when you want to have it printed out. So we're going to try and make these um, um, tools for like working with twig as well as tools with changing what Twig does. So uh, pre-craft us is something that we consider a tool right now, where the variable that comes out of Drupal is not the one you want to print in the template, you want to change the way it's formatted. So um, in, like for a node, you're submitted by information, right? For some reason, it ends up in one variable with the author name and the date. We want to like, screw that. We're just going to give you an author name and a date, and we're going to print them both in your template file. And if you want to change the way the date's formatted, rather than requiring that you go back to the pre-process layer and say format it this way, we're going to do a function you can wrap, it's actually called a filter, around that date in Twig and say pipe format date medium, and it'll change the format right there. So instead of doing it the Drupal 7 way, which is like go back to pre-process, figure out what the original Unix timestamp was, call a function, put it back in the variables, now it's like right here in this template file, here's a tool that you can use to change the format of that date. 
So if we're going to remove something from the way we did it the old way, we're going to provide you an equivalent tool to do the same thing inside your template. Stuff like that. Does that make more sense? Okay. Any changes to how CSS interfaces with all this? I mean, you see this for processors or anything like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so how assets are being handled in Drupal 8 are completely different, right? We're trying to create a way where on any given page you could cache like everything except for one block. And depending on the contents of that block, you might need like a different style sheet added. So it's also got to like not cache the like aggregated style sheet that gets added. So there's like a bunch of like magic that CSS JavaScript asset people are doing that I don't really know about. Um, what I'm working on is just printing out all of the attributes that are generated everywhere else. And I know that there's a bunch of work going on to like naming them consistently, cleaning up all of our CSS anyway because it's all like 10 years old, adding stuff to the page in a different way. Um, SAS has been added. I don't think it's a requirement, but it's there if you want to use it. Um, there's a bunch of stuff going on in like CSS land that I don't really know about, but I know that it's all going to be really different. <laughs> my job is not to break any of it as I'm converting stuff. And then if it breaks, goes, is it okay if this breaks? Because are you going to replace it all later? And if they say yes, then I'm like, yay, it's broken, and commit it. And then if it's you know not okay, then you're like, okay, I'll try and make even an odd striping work, even though we're dropping support for IE6. Someone could get that in sooner. That would be better. So there's just a bunch of a bunch of stuff that like I don't really know. We'll we'll figure it out when when the two things you know get merged together. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so um, there's a bunch of places where we need help. Um, right now, all of our template files and theme functions have been converted to Twig, and I say all because as every day goes by, uh, other core module creators are writing their own theme functions. So it's kind of one of those like moving target things. Um, but we have a, a sandbox that is a checkout of Drupal with everything converted. And so what our job is right now is to take all of this done stuff and apply it to the latest version of Drupal and figure out where the stuff is not done. So all of our work is not in the sandbox where we've done all of our previous work. It's now moved to core. And what we're trying to do is take all of the changes we've already made and stick them on core along with any new changes that have happened since the last time we worked on that module or that theme file. So we need help with that. We also need help um, cleaning up the markup. So if you don't know anything about Drupal or writing patches, but you know a lot about HTML, we don't have a lot of you in our community. And we need you to tell us that we have too many divs and that you don't like our class names and to write some markup that actually resembles how you would want that page to look when it's done. Because we don't know what the hell we're doing and we need someone to tell us what to do. But if someone says, here's what this markup should look like, we're really good at going, great, and sticking it in. So we've got people who can write code and patches and whatever. What we need is someone to tell us what to do. Um, this is one of the biggest things that happened in Drupal 6 and in Drupal 7 is that the core developers are like, no one told us what to do. So I'm trying to recruit people to tell us what to do so that we can actually do what people want. Um, we also need a lot of help consolidating similar templates. So removing template files that are similar to each other or removing theme functions that are similar to each other and calling the other one. Um, it's also pretty straightforward. Um, some of it's a little messy because some, some things are called like 100 times in core. And so if you wanted to like replace like theme link, that's going to be a really big patch just because there's a gazillion places that use it. Um, but if you're going to be like replacing theme user list or theme item list, that happens in one place. So there's definitely like looking at the issues of being like this one's an easy one and, and taking it and looking at another issue and like trying to see what's going on and going on and not touching that one. So there's definitely some easy stuff there and some hard stuff, but we need help with that. Um, if we have any super awesome developer types, we're having some bugs that have been long outstanding bugs in Drupal 7 with getting theme hook suggestions to work the way they were intended to work. Um, and a lot of our like, we're gonna add new suggestions for this particular template thing isn't gonna work until these bugs get resolved. So there's like a patch that just keeps getting re-rolled and then more suggestions and then re-rolled and more suggestions. We just need someone to kind of like own it and be like, I'm gonna fix this. And then when it's fixed, everyone else will be like, yay, and we'll all keep going. All right, um, <clears throat> we're also gonna skip the pre-process two string stuff unless everything else gets done. And we're gonna keep, skip the converting renderable arrays into objects until everything else gets done. So if you wanna help with those two things, you have to help us get everything else done first. Hmm. So, more. <laughs> Um, okay, so um, I wanted to show you really quickly where all of the work is getting done, so that if you did want to get involved, um, you could do that. So, computer is tired. Okay. Uh, we have, um, if you open a browser, and don't look at my email, uh, <laughs> instead go to lb.cm slash twig. This should take you to our sandbox project page. 
And this is a page that has a bunch of documentation on how to use Twig, how to work with Twig, what the heck we're doing right now in the process of converting Drupal to Twig. It also has a little video of like how to create new patches against Core. Um, we've tried to create a bunch of really great documentation here. Now it's, it's you know documentation and Drupal flavor documentation, so it's probably not complete. But if you have any suggestions on how to improve it, we're also open to that. Um, but I think it's pretty straightforward. We've got a video you can watch to explain it. We've got an example of what our pre-process function definitions need to look like in the patches, because those have changed a little bit. We've got um, uh, a bunch of uh, documentation and um, uh, stuff that other people have created that might be useful if you're trying to do something in particular. Um, we have meetings every Thursday at 11.30 on Google Plus, so if you want to just jump in and see what we're working on at any given time, anyone is welcome to join, even if you're not actually doing anything, just coming in. Spying is perfectly fine, too. And we've also posted our roadmap. Sure, I did that last week. Yeah, it was great, <laughs> although you didn't have any sound, so we were like making faces at you or whatever. But um, there's also um, uh, a roadmap on here that's talking about what we're actually working on, and this is probably the most important thing. Um, we've got a bunch of issues that are done, like putting in some of the most basic pieces just to make Twig work. And then the thing that we're working on right now is this huge issue number three that's like convert everything in core to Twig. And everything else that comes after this is all kind of postponed until we can get this done. And so if you click on this issue, this is like my, my new homepage, um, it has uh, uh, links to all of the stuff in Drupal 8 that we need to get converted. So it's got a link to every single module that needs to be converted to Twig, and also links to every single theme file or, um, I mean, in, in, in the way that they're gonna relate to issues. So uh, we don't need to have an issue for every single theme function, but we do wanna have an issue for manageable chunks of theme functions. So theme.inc is a really big file, and we've divided it into a couple of smaller pieces just so that people who are working on it can deal with it in a way that our brains can wrap around. Um, most modules um, can be done in one issue, but as you can see, like views is a huge module, and so we've divided it into a bunch of smaller issues so that if people want to tackle one little piece of it, they can. When we're done, we'll cr take all of the views stuff and bundle it up into a bigger patch and submit that to the views people to review. But in terms of us getting work done on it, we try to break it down in a way that's easy for anyone to take an hour in any given day and do whatever they can. Um, and then at the very top here, the most important things are the, um, the top nine. So if we can get the top nine of these done, then Twig is definitely going into Drupal 8, like when we get it done. So if these nine are done, we can do benchmarking and we can figure out what things we're looking at, looking at. And everything else is like, that'll be nice, but whatever. Right now, because we've got some major issues going on with the top nine, there are people in the core committer community who are like, oh, I don't know if we should do this. This isn't a good idea. And so what we're trying to do is like prove to them that like we can get that done and it'll be so much better that you're never going to do, you're never going to look back. It's going to be great. Um, but we keep running into issues. Like, for example, we create little sub issues every time we run into a problem where it's like, Drupal is stupid and it should do this differently. Then we have to solve that first. Um, so if you want to help on our top nine, that's the most important thing. Um, some of them are actually pretty straightforward, like um, theme links, just takes like the links on a node and turns them into like links, um, but no one's done any work on it yet. So if anyone wanted to like <laughs> try that, it's pretty straightforward. Some of them are a little bit harder, like um, node module has a lot of like process and pre-process stuff going on in it that we you know need to check really carefully as we're working on it. So um, depending on where your comfort level is, you can also do that. There's also like a, theme item list is pretty straightforward. We kind of have all of that already. So if anyone wants to kind of take that and run with it, that would be good too. So there's some, some easy stuff and some hard stuff that we just need to kind of see proof of concept, get this stuff done. And then beyond that, if all of those look too hard, there's a bunch of really easy stuff down here in this list. In fact, some things are like already done. They had one theme function that we converted or they had one theme function that we removed. And so it's like, okay, but that's not really that important. So I can put anyone on those, but like, in terms of like our ability to get this done um, sooner rather than later, the top nine are really the most important ones. Um, so, uh, okay, let's do a quick example. Um, so this is Drupal 8. <clears throat> and let's see, I'm logged in. Um, which one should we do? Let's do a Actually, let's do one that needs review. This breadcrumb one seems pretty innocuous. All right, so I'm just going to start on this issue. I'm going to read all of the comments, which are like, here's a patch, here's another patch, here's a review of this patch, here's some stuff that needs 
changed, and here's change. So I can copy this patch, <coughs> and then the way that, oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. The way that I apply patches is probably not like sanctioned. Um, with my computer. It's like I'm having a really hard time showing your screen to the world via Google Hangout and the screen in this room. But um, uh, it's funny. So what I'm going to do is grab the patch file. So I just did like a right click from, from this issue, copied the link location, went down here, grabbed it. I'm going to do a patch to apply the patch instead of a git apply. I find the git apply doesn't always work. I don't really know why it works sometimes and not other times, but this always works. So uh, minus P1 just says git as like a file A versus file B at the top. It'll confuse the patch. And if you say minus P1, then it throws away that stuff and applies the patch to exactly the file that you want it to apply. Um, and what it'll do is tell you, you know, okay, I've patched this file theme.inc and <coughs> I've added this new file, core module system templates breadcrumb.html.twig. So, Really straightforward. Oh. Oh. Anyone can do it. Um, I'm going to open Drupal 8. And then you'll notice there's like a, a core folder that we've talked about. Um, inside the core folder, uh, we have the theme.inc file is the one that the breadcrumb was in. And then I'm going to look for breadcrumb. Maybe that was not the right thing to look for. Okay. So there's a. Uh, where did it go? So one of the changes that you have to make when you're converting a theme function to a template file is to tell, um, maybe I can make this font bigger. Can you guys see this all right? Um, to tell Drupal that it's now using a template file instead of a theme function. So we added this line here, template, right, that says this is breadcrumb. And then another thing we need to do is if there was a theme function, that sometimes the, some of the logic that happens in that inside that function gets moved into a pre-process function. I expect that there actually isn't one here because the breadcrumb function was so simple, nothing needed to be pre-processed. So the only change to this file is this breadcrumb. Then inside um, the template folder, so this is inside, uh, it told us where it was, I think it was system module, core module system templates. So another change to this is that every single module in core now has a subfolder inside it specifically for the templates that it provides. So inside the system module, there's a fold here for templates. Inside the templates folder, there's now one for breadcrumb. This is what the patch added. And so when you're reviewing a twig um, template, there's a couple of things to look for. Um, the doc block now starts with the twig style comments, but all of the PHP style comments are still in here exactly as they were before. Um, part of that is just because we're using Doxygen to do all of our documentation <coughs> and core files and leaving the PHP style in there meant that we only had to do one little teeny tiny change to say, look for PHP comments inside of Twig comments and then we're done with it. So we're leaving those as they are. Um, it needs to say about the same thing as it did before with the description and then in the available variables it tells you which variables are there. And then it'll tell you um, if there's a file that it needs to see. For example, in this case it's template preprocess, but there's no... Um, template preprocess breadcrumb because there was no breadcrumb preprocessor in there. And then it needs to say in group theme polls. This is a really s simple example of a doc block. The one thing that I also like to check is to make sure that the uh, description of what this breadcrumb thing is is actually makes sense to you. So if you've never seen the breadcrumb template and you're wondering what the heck the breadcrumbs are, you're the best person to tell us if this is descriptive enough. For me, I'm like, oh sure, everyone knows what breadcrumbs are. Breadcrumb trail items is fine. But if you're like, what's a breadcrumb? You might want to <laughs> say breadcrumbs are these things that whatever. You know, you can add fluffy, warm text in there if you want to. Um, and then in our twig code, we obviously want to find out if we have breadcrumbs before we print a nav tag. So it's good that there's an if around there. Um, and then inside our heading tag, um, this is something that's hidden, which is why it's element invisible, which is fine. 
And then you'll notice that the way we call the T function inside Twig functions, this is a filter. So we've got the string of text and then a vertical pipe and then T. That looks fine. Um, if you were passing uh, arguments like the T function sometimes accepts replacement patterns, you just open it exactly like a, um, a PHP function, but after T. In this case, we don't have any, so it's fine. So that looks good. Um, we have an OL for a, a numbered list, which is good, an ordered list. And then there's a for loop that says for each item, print the item inside an LI tag, and the for loop, and the OL tag, and the nav tag. So for me, this looks like a really clean template. I think it looks great. And so what I would do in this issue is change the status to reviewed, or reviewed and tested by the community, depending on how um, you're feeling about marking something RTBC. If it's not really RTBC, someone else will come behind you and change it back. So I, if you think it's great, I would say just go for it because a lot of times we don't know something's RTBC or it's been reviewed at all. Um, and so we won't look at it at all. But if you change the status, we'll be like, oh yeah, it's RTBC and someone else will look at it and then they can decide if it's not. So if you don't know what to do, if in doubt, change the status. So that'll just indicate to someone else that there's something there to be reviewed. And then you'd say, you know, looks great. Without any typos is good, but you know, whatever. And then you could just save the, the issue. Um, okay, just doing a sanity check to make sure I would really wanted to do that. <laughs> and then that next person um, who's responsible for looking at one of these issues, as soon as you say reviewed and tested by the community, is one of our core committers. And what they'll do in this particular process is if they come by and say, oh yeah, this does look really good, so they'll just add a word into here in the subject that calls it ready because they're not actually committing this to core until we get those first nine issues done. So this will just kind of sit in holding pattern until they're ready for it and then we'll roll them all into one big patch and jump them all in at once. So really reviewing a patch is really straightforward. Um, if you have any questions, especially if you pick a little one like theme breadcrumb is a good example. If you have any questions about like the syntax stuff, we have a bunch of documentation on, oh, wrong button. Um, we have a bunch of documentation on the uh, sandbox page. There's um, a link in the sidebar under documentation that is our Twig coding standards for Drupal. So if you just wanna see like what the doc block should look like or um, what the variable, how variables should be defined or how uh, if statements should look, any of this stuff, a lot of it is the same documentation that's on um, the Twig website, but any mistake that we found people commonly making when doing this to Drupal, we just shoved into this page. We were like, we don't want to make you go to two different sources. If you're already fairly familiar with it, but you're making a really common mistake, we're just going to put that right on this page. So if you need to know what things should look like, it should mostly be documented right here. We've got examples of lots of different stuff. So just compare this page to the template file that's in the patch, and if it looks good, say it looks good, and if there's something silly going on, someone else will catch it later. So it's always better to just like make progress, even if the progress gets unmade, because then at least it's mo momentum. But if you just write, oh, I'm not sure, then no one else knows that they need to go re-review it. So, pretty easy. Right? <laughs> okay, does anyone else have any questions on um, um, anything? No? Um, how do editors respond to context? Some of this stuff. Uh, what do you mean, context? Editors that are context sensitive that highlight, perhaps in different colors, your so HTML and your. Yeah, th I'm using um, uh, TextMate, which is not an IDE; it's just a text editor, yeah, right. and there is a bundle for TextMate that highlights syntax for Twig. So okay. um, this um, is hard to see in this particular color bit, scheme. Yeah. But it does actually detect like when different things were used, right? Like a comment sure. turned it green, and if it's a command, it's got like little blue yeah. colors in there. So you just have to figure out what your editor is and find the right plugin for Twig, and it'll do syntax highlighting for you. Um, there's also a bunch of other things you can do, like you can have it like close tags and stuff. It'll also close Twig tags as well as closing HTML tags. And, and, that and that's because Twig has been around for a while. Yeah, it's because uh, people who write Twig are nerds. And so they often write <laughs> other things plugins, like right. plugins for whatever editor yeah. they're using. Okay. And you'll find that especially like the Twig language itself is really 
It's elegant and really complicated in that it takes the entire contents of your file and parses it with like regular expressions mm -hmm. and separates out like, oh, I found a twig indicator. Which kind is it? Okay, what's inside of it? What do I do with it? And, and so the, the kind of the brain that can figure out how to take the contents of a file and parse it and look for specific patterns and throw stuff away and insert other stuff or whatever is also really good at, you know, they understand parsing files and highlighting syntax and different editors and stuff. So you'll find that like it just happens to be that those two things are really similar. And so there are a lot of syntax highlighters for anything you could possibly imagine. Who wants to go home and work on Twig right now? <laughs> okay, we have an IRC channel. Um, it's pound Drupal dash Twig. So if you want to try it, but you're not really sure exactly what's going on, or you're looking at a particular patch and you've got questions about it, you can ping anyone in that room. We've got like a bunch of people who just came to a meeting like this and they're like, oh, that looks like fun. And then all of a sudden became like my new hero because they wrote like 5,000 patches or reviewed 5,000 patches and they understand syntax better than I do. And I'll go and post a patch and they'll be like, Jen Lampton, you got all of this stuff all wrong. And I'm like, I love you. Because sometimes it's just like, you just have to look at it a lot of times. And if you have more people looking at it, then it's just better. And so even if you can't do anything other than review syntax, that's still a huge help to all of us because we miss stuff. People do, that's just people. Um, so just come into IRC and ask whatever questions you can and leave whatever comments you can and we'll all try and help everyone all the way through it. And then we're going to make Drupal 8 really good. It's going to be awesome. Everyone's going to leave WordPress and come to Drupal. <laughs> Maybe not everyone. <laughs> all right. All right. Well. Just to close, I've I've been pretty much sold on, on a twig thing, oh. so so I'm going to stumble and, and try to try to help with the uh, the twig project a little bit myself. So that's just you know if if you don't if if you're thinking that you might want to do something, but you're worried about whether you can you know fully dive in, you know whether you can believe Jen that it's as accessible as she says it is. You can you can bug me first, and we can sort of form a group and you know. So if you're interested in working on Twig, if this is sold, bounce off of me as well, and and I'm happy to stumble and confidently through it with you, and you know, I won't be intimidating you. <laughs> all right. There's no one in our in our chat room that's very intimidating either. Those people all hang out in other chat rooms, so it's a good place to ask really stupid questions. I ask stupid questions in there all the time. I'm like, what did we decide about this thing? And people are like, remember how you got in a big fight and made us do it this way? And I was like, no, obviously I forgot. <laughs> but Sounds like everything I've worked on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, so, so that, that's the end of the presentation, but we're, we're gonna continue on for a few minutes. I'll turn on the music and we'll just hang out for a little bit. Cool. And you know, I, as long as you guys are hanging out, they, they look like they're going for a while, so you can start drifting out. But the uh, that's it. I, again, I've, I've got a sign-up sheet over here if anybody wants to uh, be a part of the whole uh, East Bay Drupal Users Group organizing thing. And, you know, oh, uh, yeah, why don't you pass it around? That's a great idea. And there we go. Thank you very much.